gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling, and thanks a lot for checking out my uh, competition day report from uh, here at Lake of the Ozarks for the BFL tournament we had today. I'm going to give you guys a rundown on my day and how I caught them and everything, and uh, sort of a post-tournament analyzation to maybe help everybody uh, uh, learn from what I did right and wrong today. Um, real quick before we get started guys just want to remind you we're running out of time for the uh we got the march solar bat cell on my rb2 series uh solar bat sunglasses here um if you guys buy a pair in the month of march here just got about another week left 25 percent off on my glasses and a grab bag full of sunglasses so i'll put the solar bat link in the description if you guys want to get you a pair of these good solar bats much appreciated <clears throat> okay guys I'll give you guys the rundown how it went um if you guys watched the the practice report I did for the last two days, um, I had a really good practice. You know, I had the, the first day of practice, I had um, probably 14 or 15 pounds, but I caught those like in three hours. I, I The first day of practice, I launched down by the dam and fished, you know, three or four hours, and I didn't like it, didn't feel right. So then I made a long run up the river and um, went up there and, and like in three hours caught a really good bag. And uh, I caught, caught them all on a chatterbait, shallow. And um, we had, it was windy, rainy, and cold. And I really felt if we had some sun, that would position those fish better. And uh, I'd even catch them better, which we had sun today. And then um, yesterday, the second day, I stayed closer and I caught a lot of fish. And, uh, you know, I caught, you know, limit, you know, but I didn't have any, the biggest one I had was like two and, I don't know, maybe two and a half or something like that. But anyway, a lot of fish. I'm pretty confident going into today. So, we get out today, completely different conditions. We had the front come through last night. Uh, we got, you can see now, we got bluebird skies, sunny skies. Um, it's, you know, we had probably about a 10 mile an hour wind. A um, little bit cooler, not much cooler, but the main thing is we just had a north wind and bright skies. And it had been, it had been literally cloudy here for a week. So my plan was, was to go up the river. And uh, there's two different reasons I wanted to do that. Number one is to get away from the, the, the boat traffic and the people. And number two is I really felt that there was a chance to catch a 20 pound bag up there. So I ran about 40 miles up the river this morning and started running all that stuff that I had caught them two days ago on. And um, right off the bat, probably the first two hours or so, I caught um, I, I caught two or three that I had to put on the board to measure. They were pretty close and they didn't go. And uh, kept working farther and farther up. I, I ran through all the areas that um, that I'd got bit in the day before and uh, I didn't catch any keepers. And the water was perfect. It's like, I thought it was really gonna have muddied up, but it didn't. The water clarity didn't change at all. In fact, I would have liked it if it had muddied up just a little bit. It was a little bit clean actually for that far up the river. And um, so I kept working up the river, you know, getting, cause I had plenty of, as a pattern that I was on. I was fishing, I was catching them on, you know, shallow crappie piles and shallow brush piles and some on docks and some on rocky banks but I sort of knew what to look for. And I kept running that stuff and running that stuff. And I thought it was just a matter of the sun getting up a little bit more higher in the sky and turning those shallow fish on because the water temperature was cold up there. It was only 46 degrees, 45 in a couple areas. And I'm just fishing and fishing and fishing. I'm catching some short fish here and there, like some 14 inchers, but I cannot get a keeper. And here it is, I got to weigh in at 315 and I'm 45 miles from the weigh-in and it's like after one o'clock. So I, I sat down in the boat and I said, I just ate a, little, ate a little snack and I said, okay, do I keep going and just hopefully I get, you know, pull up in the right creek and catch a couple big ones or do I need to go back and run down the lake to where I caught the smaller limit of keepers yesterday and try to get some fish in the boat the last hour for points because I'm, you know, trying to make the regional here but by the end of the year. So I stayed with it a little bit more and I, you know, didn't catch any more. Everything seemed dead. So here it is. I looked at the clock and I said, okay, if I run back now, I'm going to have like 30 minutes left to fish in some of those areas. So I ran all the way back down. There are 45 miles one way back to the stretch that I'd caught them on um, yesterday pulled in there and right off the bat, I catch a nice largemouth keeper. Then I, then right off, then about five minutes later, I catch another nice one. And then I catch the third one. So I catch, I got three fish in the boat in like 20 minutes and uh, out of time for the day, had to run to the weigh-in with three fish that I caught right at the end of the day. 
So I no doubt I'd have caught a, a limit if I, you know, had a decent limit if I had just stayed in there all day. But I made that decision to run up the river and it did not pay off. And I heard Dion Hibden was talking about on stage that he never had a bite until like one o'clock today. So, uh, and he, he said he was fishing some dirty water too. So from that standpoint, I don't know, maybe the front that came through there, you know, did something to him. That's the only thing that could have happened is, that, is having that front come through there. It just really, really messed with those fish in correlation with the cold water temperature. So anyway, like I said, I, all, you know, I really appreciate all the, the fans of the channel here that have watched this, you know, and, you know, I know I got a lot of people that have my back and for the haters, uh, you know, I do have a group of haters out there, uh, that, um, think I'm a meanie when it comes to live scope and they, uh, unsubscribe every time I mention the word climate change. So I can already see the comments. It's going to say, Randy, you suck. Randy, you're too old. Randy, give it up. Randy, you're a dinosaur. Randy, you're has been. Randy, you should have had a live scope and you'd have caught some fish. Uh, Randy, you're, you're never going to keep up with young guys because you're not live scoping. So I just wanted to get the comments out of the way because they're coming after a suck tournament. But really, guys, when I weighed in, there was a lot of like one fish bags. I saw a bunch of pros coming up with one fish. So I think it was tougher than what most people think. So in retrospect, looking back, if I had to do it over again, I would have put that chatterbait down. I'd have probably fish, pitched a jig more. I did catch two that were close to keepers. Uh, flipping my old school jig. I caught, had to measure both of them. They're like 14 and three quarters. Um, with the sun out there, if I'd have just put that jig in my hand, um, I probably could have done better up there. But knowing what I know, if I, if I had to do it over again, I'd stay, you know, right where I caught the, the limit yesterday and, and came out of here with a limit of fish. But anyway, got some points. Moving on to the next one. Again, guys, thank you very much for watching the videos this week. Uh, much appreciated the support. And we'll talk to you guys later. See you.